Have you ever wondered why there is no physical bridge between Africa and Europe, despite their remarkably close proximity? Indeed, the distance separating these two continents is surprisingly small. Picture the Strait of Gibraltar, a narrow strip of water marking the boundary between Africa and Europe. At its slimmest, this strait measures a mere 14.3 kilometers. Now imagine a bridge spanning this expanse, linking the two continents in a tangible way. The thought is intriguing, isn't it? Yet, no such structure exists. Today, we're going to explore why. We'll delve into the historical and environmental considerations that have, so far, prevented the construction of this theoretical bridge. Remember, we're not just talking about a feat of engineering, we're discussing a potential game-changer in terms of cultural exchange, economic activity and global connectivity. Now that we understand the geographic proximity, let's delve into why there isn't a physical bridge connecting the two continents. Historically, there have been several propositions to physically connect Africa and Europe. These ambitious projects range from bridges to tunnels, each with their own unique set of challenges and potential benefits. One of the earliest proposals came in the late 19th century, when French engineer Fernand Arnaudin suggested a suspension bridge across the Strait of Gibraltar. However, the immense length and the depth of the strait, along with the strong currents, proved too daunting even for Anodin, who was renowned for his innovative bridge designs. In the mid-20th century, another proposal emerged, this time for a tunnel beneath the strait. The project was spearheaded by the Spanish engineer Carlos Fernández Casado. His proposal was more technologically feasible than Anodin's, but the cost estimates were astronomical running into several billions of dollars. Furthermore, the unstable geological conditions and the risk of seismic activity added layers of complexity and risk to the project. Throughout the years, many other designs and proposals have been put forth. In 1980, a group of Japanese architects proposed a floating tunnel suspended in the water by flotation devices. While this idea was certainly innovative, it too was met with skepticism due to the potential for damage from ships and marine life. Another ambitious proposal came in the form of a superhighway suggested by the Russian Railways President Vladimir Yakunin in 2015. This envisioned a road and rail link spanning from London to New York, passing through Africa and Europe. However, the monumental costs and logistical challenges not to mention the political hurdles, rendered this idea largely a dream. Each of these proposals faced major challenges. Technological limitations, financial constraints, geological complexities, and even political hurdles all played a part in their eventual downfall. The strait, with its strong currents, deep waters, and seismic activity, proved to be a formidable adversary. Though the idea was enticing, these historical attempts fell short due to a host of challenges. In today's world, with technological advancements, building such a bridge is not entirely out of the realm of possibility. We've seen feats of engineering that have defied odds and reshaped landscapes, from the towering Burj Khalifa in Dubai to the sprawling Great Wall of China. Let's delve into the modern engineering capabilities. In the realm of bridge construction, we have marvels like the Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge in China, the world's longest bridge spanning over 164 kilometers. Or consider Norway's proposed submerged floating tunnel, an underwater roadway planned to traverse the country's deep fjords. Such examples showcase the extraordinary capabilities of contemporary engineering. Now, imagine applying this level of innovation to build a bridge across the Strait of Gibraltar. We could potentially utilize a combination of suspension bridges, artificial islands, and floating tunnels. Advanced materials like carbon fiber reinforced polymers, known for their exceptional strength and lightness, could be employed to withstand the harsh marine environment. But let's talk numbers. The cost of such a project would be astronomical, running into hundreds of billions of dollars, and that's just for the construction. Maintenance and security expenses would add substantially to the total. What about the benefits? Well, a physical bridge between Africa and Europe could potentially revolutionize trade routes, 
and transportation, providing a direct link for goods and people. It could foster closer cultural exchanges and economic cooperation between the two continents. But it's essential to remember that feasibility doesn't equate to advisability. Just because we can, doesn't mean we should. The environmental, political, and socio-economic repercussions of such a project must be thoroughly considered. While modern technology might make it possible, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. One of the major roadblocks to building a bridge between Africa and Europe is the potential environmental impact. Just imagine a colossal structure stretching across the Strait of Gibraltar. While it's a fascinating idea, the environmental implications of such a project are immense. Let's delve into some of these concerns. First off, let's consider the marine life. The Strait of Gibraltar is home to a diverse array of marine species. Building a bridge across these waters could disrupt their habitats, potentially leading to a decline in biodiversity. Dolphins, whales, and various types of fish all rely on these waters for survival. Such construction could interfere with their feeding and breeding patterns, and the noise pollution could have detrimental effects on these sensitive creatures. Now let's talk about water currents. The Strait of Gibraltar is a crucial point in the global oceanic conveyor belt, a system of deep ocean circulation driven by temperature and salinity. This system plays a pivotal role in distributing heat around the Earth, influencing our climate. A bridge, depending on its design, could potentially disrupt these currents, leading to unforeseen climatic consequences. Next, we must consider the local ecosystems on land. The construction process would require significant land alteration, potentially leading to habitat destruction and soil erosion. This could have a ripple effect on land-dwelling species, again impacting biodiversity. Plus, the increased human activity and potential pollution could further degrade these environments. And we haven't even touched on the carbon footprint of such a massive construction project. The production of concrete, the most common construction material, is one of the largest sources of carbon dioxide emissions worldwide. A project of this magnitude would undoubtedly contribute to global warming. To sum it up, the environmental implications of building a bridge between Africa and Europe are wide-ranging and complex. It's not just about connecting two land masses, it's about weighing the potential benefits against the potential harm to our planet. The environmental risks alone pose a significant challenge to the idea of a physical bridge. Beyond the environmental concerns, there are also political and social factors to consider. A bridge spanning the Strait of Gibraltar could transform not only the landscape, but the geopolitical dynamics of the region. Firstly, territorial disputes could arise. The Strait of Gibraltar is a strategic waterway, controlled by Spain and the United Kingdom on the European side and Morocco on the African side. A bridge could potentially stir up conflicts over jurisdiction and control. Immigration is another crucial consideration. Europe has been grappling with the complex issue of African immigration for years. A bridge could potentially ease the journey for migrants seeking a better life, but it could also exacerbate tensions and lead to stricter immigration policies. On the positive side, a bridge could significantly boost trade between Africa and Europe. The ease of transportation could facilitate the exchange of goods and services, fostering economic growth on both continents. However, this increased connectivity could also lead to exploitation if not managed responsibly. Let's not forget, the social implications are just as profound. Local communities on both sides of the strait could experience a significant shift in their way of life. While some may welcome the increased tourism and business opportunities, others might fear the loss of their traditional lifestyle. Moreover, a bridge could serve as a tangible symbol of cultural exchange. It could encourage a greater understanding and appreciation of the richly diverse cultures of Africa and Europe. But the flip side is the risk of cultural erosion and the loss of unique identities in the face of globalization. In essence, the political and social implications of a bridge between Africa and Europe are multifaceted and complex. 
They encompass everything from territorial rights and immigration issues to cultural exchange and economic dynamics. Each of these aspects would need to be carefully considered and balanced to ensure a positive outcome for all involved. The political and social considerations add another layer of complexity to the idea of a bridge between Africa and Europe. Thus, taking into account all these factors, it becomes clear why a physical bridge between Africa and Europe does not exist. The geographical proximity, a mere 14.3 kilometers at the Strait of Gibraltar, may seem inviting for such a venture. Yet, historical attempts have shown us the colossal challenges that come with it. Modern technology, while advanced, is not quite there yet to make this a viable project. The environmental concerns too are significant. A bridge of this scale would undoubtedly impact the marine life and the delicate balance of the ecosystem in the strait. Lastly, we cannot overlook the political and social implications. A physical connection between the two continents would reshape their relationship in unprecedented ways, bringing along a slew of complexities. While a bridge between Africa and Europe might be a fascinating idea, the practical challenges and implications make it a complex and unlikely endeavor.